Hello everyone, Amy Rosavi here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Um, be warned, this is a very long video. <laughs> I mentioned this on some of my social media that I made um, a card with a ton of products and I'm finally getting around to editing this video. This was one of my children's birthday card and I had so many ideas rolling in my head and it really did take me about two days to make this card because I just did it when I had time. And yeah, let's just get right into it. So I started with the Adorable Elephants stamp set from My Favorite Things. And there's this balloon in the set and I'm stamping it onto some post-it masking um, tape. I wanted to mask off um, a group of balloons because I wanted to stamp 10 balloons since it's her 10th birthday. So I stamped the balloon multiple times. I didn't worry about the string because that's irrelevant. It's just the main part of the balloon and then the little um, knot, whatever you call it, that I wanted to trim out. So I stamped it 10 times altogether and just trimmed it out with my scissors. And with masking, the best way to do it is to trim just um, either on the stamp line or slightly inside the stamped line. That way you get the best image. So once I trimmed them out, which didn't take very long, I grabbed my um, scrap paper, like my grid paper that I use for scraps and everything else. And I just started stamping and masking to kind of give myself an idea of how I wanted this group of balloons to look before I actually stamp it onto um, the panel that I'm gonna color. So I stamped it onto the grid paper um, and you can just see, I stamp an image, mask it off, stamp the next one, mask it off, um, yeah. So I did it and then this is where I found I didn't like um, the way I'd stamped it. So it was a good way to experiment first. Um, with the second row, I didn't ink up the strings because I didn't want, um, you can see where it would have looked like a hot mess. Um, so yeah, this way I looked at it and it just looked odd. Obviously I wanted it to look a little more even. So that gave me a good kind of mental idea of what I wanted to do. So my whole plan was to do, um, watercoloring to color in the images. So I've got some Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock and I know which elephant I want to use. So again, I'm kind of figuring out where I'm going to place the elephant on the card so that I get the balloons in the right spot. And then I just start stamping and masking away. So I'm using um, my favorite things, black licorice hybrid ink. This is a good one for watercoloring. I've never had a problem with it. So um, obviously you can reuse the mask. That's the nice thing about um, doing things like this, like the time and effort that went into stamping and cutting out all these masks is I can save them, which I did. And I just stick them to the backing sheet of the stamp set itself. So if I ever want to do something similar or just, yeah, mask off a few balloons or the little elephant, I will have these extra masks to use and I don't have to trim them out again. So got all the images stamped and I'd mask them off. And then I got my little elephant stamped where I wanted it because I wanted it to look like he was holding this whole group of balloons, you know, and floating off into um, the air. And made sure to mask off the last balloon. There was another reason why I did masking for this. I did contemplate trying um, liquid frisket to mask off the elephant and the balloon so that I could do the background. But um, because of what I'm planning on doing for the background, it's easier to just mask these images with actual masking paper. So I did the same thing with the elephant, stamped him onto the post-it tape, trimmed it out, and then coated, or like applied it over the stamped image. And then I've got two different colors of distressing here. I have um, tumbled glass and broken china. I have this whole list of supplies that I'm referring to. <laughs> and I wanted to create a pretty background. I thought about just watercoloring the background, you know, just laying down a wash of color and then, um, you know, doing a few different techniques. But like I said, the title of this card video is Experimental Birthday Card. I was just experimenting and playing and I had so many ideas running in my head that I just did it all on one card. <laughs> so instead of watercoloring the background, I sponged it. So that's where um, I don't think liquid frisket would have worked because the sponging probably would have lifted up the liquid frisket. Um, in fact, it would have. So this is where masking works a bit better. And I just um, sponged on the tumble glass first, which is very light, and just kind of let it fade off um, along the edges. And then I added a little bit of the broken china, just more um, closer to the images themselves to give it a little bit of um, depth, nothing too major. 
And then this is a favorite of mine. I've been doing this a lot lately is I love how distress inks react with water. So I grabbed my Ranger sprayer and lightly sprayed water over it. You get a different result when you're using actual watercolor paper. Um, when you sponge the distress inks onto just regular like smooth white cardstock and then spray it, you get a much um, deeper intense reaction. I think more so because it just has a chance to react more whereas watercolor paper um, is different it absorbs ink differently I don't know it's different so yeah experimenting learning new things all the time <laughs> so I spray the water let it absorb a little bit picked it up with paper towel I did that two or three times and then I wanted to see I wanted kind of like a white splatter effect um, wasn't sure where I was going with all of this so I grabbed my picket fence distress spray stain which is quite white on um, darker cardstocks. I wasn't sure how it was going to work on this, on top of Distress Inks. And yes, I'm getting all over my hands, but I didn't care. Um, I was more concerned with getting it on the background and not all over my desk. And it worked. It was very subtle though. So I, and I wanted like white splatter. So I grabbed my Copic Opaque White, which is amazing stuff. This stuff's like white. It's awesome for adding little highlights and all that kind of stuff. So I grabbed some of that and just applied it to an acrylic block. And then I thinned it out just a little bit with water. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit of water just to make it a little bit thinner. But it's still super, super white. And then I've just got this old toothbrush that I keep with my tools. And you can just see I run my thumbnail along it and flick that right onto the cardstock. And you get pure white splatter. Really fun. Makes a mess. <laughs> I had it all over my hands, everywhere. Um, but yeah, really easy to clean up. I just use a baby wipe and it just wipes off my hands. I That's how I clean my brush, my acrylic blocks. Like I get the baby wipes from Costco, which are amazing. The Kirkland ones are the way, the way to go. Um, and if I remember, I'll link to that in the description box below the video. So once I was done with all that and everything is completely dry, I just peeled off the mask and you can see this perfect little adorable image with all his balloons and nice and clean so that I can actually um, color them. So same thing, I wanted to watercolor these little guys with um, distress inks and I had posted a card on my blog for the MFT countdown that used um, this same stamp set and I had a lot of people asking what colors I used and these are the colors I used. So for the elephant itself, I used um, black soot, hickory smoke, and pumice stone distress inks. And really simple, just wet each area with clean water before I colored with it. And I just super sped this up because I didn't really do anything too fancy. Um, you can just see, I just mix the colors. I just smush the ink pads onto an acrylic block and then pick up the colors with my paintbrush and apply it to the little image. And I, for the most part, kind of let each area dry. With the elephant, it wasn't as finicky because um, I didn't mind, you know, the body and the head if that um, kind of bled into each other it was the same colors. Those parts, though, I waited till they were dry before I did the ears because I didn't want the gray, like, bleeding into the pink. So super simple, super cute. And then for the balloons, I wanted them in all different super bright colors. And the balloons I did individually. So I made sure to watercolor one at a time in separate areas so that the colors wouldn't bleed into each other. And I'll have them all listed um, with the supplies um, underneath the video as well as on my blog, all the different colors I use. But basically I use Squeeze Lemonade, Mermaid Lagoon, Shaded Lilac, Spiced Marmalade, Festive Berries, Twisted Citron, and Picked Raspberry for the balloons. Um, didn't do any extra shading or any extra colors. I only used one color per balloon. Just got it wet with water first and then picked up the color that I'd smushed onto the acrylic block and applied that and then moved on to a balloon that wasn't touching and then let it all dry. So then once it was all dry, I ran that through my die cutting machine with the largest die from MFT's Blueprints 2 Dynamics. And then I grabbed another die set. This was the Stitched Alphabet Dynamics. I have done this before in previous videos um, and, and I've said how I like to personalize cards that I give to my kids. Um, even though my kids don't have very strange names, um, it's very hard to find things with their names on it. Um, yeah or at least in their spelling. So I always, almost always when I make them a card, like to, 
use um, alphabet dies, you know, and specialize it for them. So I die cut um, the letters with different colors of cardstock and then set that aside. I wanted to add to um, the front of the card, like add an actual sentiment. So I die cut some black cardstock with uh, one of the fishtail flags layers, Stacks Dynamics. And then I coated it with anti-static powder. I always do this, especially when I'm embossing on dark cardstock with lighter powder. It just prevents the powder from sticking to um, any other areas of the cardstock, especially if your fingers touch it or anything like that. So I always coat it generously with anti-static powder. And then the sentiment is from the amazing stamp set from MFT. And I inked it up with Versamark ink and then stamped it there onto the piece of cardstock. And then coat this with detail white embossing powder. And I always do this over a coffee filter because you can get containers of coffee filters for dirt cheap. They're not staticky. I can funnel the embossing powder back into the container and they're biodegradable. So it's like win, win, win on all fronts. <laughs> so once I did that, um, heat it with my heat tool until it is completely melted, which only takes a minute. And I usually do that off camera just to make sure I don't burn myself. And um, I wipe off the anti-static powder with my fingers so that you don't have that white residue. And then I just applied a good line of ATG adhesive. And then I line this up on my grid mat. I always, this is where my grid mat is like a lifesaver constantly is I line everything up on there just to make sure that I'm getting it straight. Um, Cause I'm finding the, I'm really good at eyeballing things, but I'm finding the older I get, the more crooked I'm seeing things, who knows? <laughs> so lined it up onto the card front. And then for her name, again, I decided to kind of go all out. Normally I would just adhere the letters flat to the card um, if I was mailing this or yeah, just making it in general, but always, I always like to go kind of all out when it's for my kids, especially for birthdays, that sort of thing. So I decided I was gonna pop all the letters up with like dimension. And I grabbed my, the cool tack, clear um, dimensional adhesive. This stuff is really, really cool. And I keep it stored in the package. Um, apparently it can dry out if you don't keep it in the package. Plus it's basically sticky on all sides. So the best way to use this stuff is to keep it in the package at all times um, and store it in the package. It just makes it um, simpler. And then I just trim it down to fit whatever I'm working on. And it's also really nice being clear for things like this. Um, so that you don't really see the adhesive. Like if you used foam tape or anything like that, it's, it's harder to conceal. So it's a little finicky doing something like this, but always worth it in the end. So I just trimmed it down into tiny little pieces, stuck it onto the back of each letter and then popped each letter up onto the card front. And then yeah, little random noises. If the microphone's picking it up, Gavin's right behind me in his swing, always wanting to be heard. So yeah, applied adhesive to each letter and then popped that onto the card front. So then it kind of just looks like they're floating. That was also kind of part of it too, is just this whole theme of, you know, floating little balloons and the little character and then the letters as well. So really, really fun. And I loved these stitched um, letters because it just gives it that extra little something. And then for my card base, um, pulled out my little score pal buddy and my Teflon bone folder. Seriously, every single video I rave about it. It's a must have item. <laughs> so got my Teflon bone folder, scored the card front, which is standard A2 size. So four and a quarter by 11 and then scored at five and a half and give it a good crisp crease with the bone folder. And then I was going to adhere the card front, but then had to add just a little bit more. So I grabbed some Baker's Twine from my stash. This is Doodle Twine from Doodlebug. The pink was like the right color to kind of go with the um, Rangers picked raspberry ink color. So um, cut a generous length of that. And then I just wrapped it right around the very top of the panel here. And with Baker's Twine, it can be a little bit finicky to tie in a knot or in a bow because it's twisted. So what I like to do is I use my reverse tweezers. I've shown this um, in a, a couple times in videos, but you know, you start the bow and the knot there and then you use the reverse tweezers to hold that in place while you tie your bow. And also with Baker's twine, you want to be loose with the bow as you're adjusting it and not 
pull it fully tight until you're kind of happy with um, how your bow is positioned, what size it is. Because with Baker's twine being so twisted, um, if you tighten it before you start pulling on the tails and on the bow itself, um, it'll just keep twisting and then like the bow itself is twisted and looking funny. Um, so that's where it's nice to use the reverse tweezers to kind of hold everything in place while you fiddle and adjust the bow and then pull everything tight and you're good to go. So I applied some foam tape, you know, my big daddy roll of scotch foam tape, which is amazing. Um, another must have adhesive. It's pricey to get that roll, but it lasts forever. And I applied it right over the back of the baker's twine there. So then it'll hold that in place as well so that um, the baker's twine doesn't slip off the card. And three big strips of that across the back of um, the card panel. And then I'm going to pop this up um, onto my card base. And for me, for whatever reason, it always works to do my card kind of sideways when I'm popping a panel up um, to make sure I've kind of got it centered. Because again, I just eyeball it. But yeah. It works when it's sideways for me. I can actually kind of see what I'm doing, I guess. So once I was done with that, I'm gonna go on and finish the inside of the card. And I just had stamped the elephant and just one of the balloons onto the same watercolor paper and die cut it with the coordinating dies. Um, I did this off camera because I did the exact same thing I did um, on the front of the card. So I had watercolored them, let them dry, and then I used the stitched numbers dynamics to die cut um, one and zero for my daughter's birthday um, again just another little way to personalize it even further and then I inked up another sentiment from the amazing set this time I just inked it up with the black licorice hybrid ink and stamped it along the bottom of the card on the inside there and then I'm just going to adhere the elephant and the balloon and the numbers into place with some Tombow Mono Multi so got them adhered and I die, I w die cut them from watercolor paper that's why normally I would just stamp you know these little guys on the inside but um, trying to watercolor with distress inks on just plain cardstock is kind of a hot mess um, it can pill and the color doesn't you know work as well that sort of thing so it was just easier to do it separately on little die cuts and then adhere it to the inside of the card so really cute really fun and normally I would end here, <laughs> but because I was experimenting and I was just curious and I wanted to add something extra because it was a birthday card, I got out my Pico Shimmer Embellisher, squeezed out a little bit onto a scrap there to make sure um, it was traveling good without bubbles. And this is the only place where I really actually did make a mistake. Um, as I was doing it, I was thinking like, this is where I need to do the same thing as how I colored them is only apply the Pico to one balloon at a time and not let them touch and let them dry. This is where patience is key. So you guys can just learn from my mistake. Um, you can see here, I, this is, I started out properly. You know, I was just doing one balloon at a time, making sure they weren't touching because yes, the Pico will somewhat reactivate the watercolor because it's not color fast. It's not permanent. Um, so this is where it would have been smart, but I got a little bit impatient because this card was taking me forever and, you know, I was doing this in between everything and um, it, it seemed to be fine, but that's also because, yeah, I was only doing one balloon at a time. So I was like, oh, let's just see what'll happen. <laughs> so yeah, I ended up filling in all the balloons. So they were all touching. It was all wet liquid Pico embellisher on top of it. And yes, you, you'll be able to see in the end photos, the color did start to travel. Um, especially the red, you can see just starting to travel a little bit into the green. Um, thankfully, because the Pico's thin and it dries somewhat quicker, like if I'd used glossy accents, I would have destroyed this whole thing because glossy accents takes a lot longer to dry. Um, another tip here is I just use a pin to poke wherever there's little air bubbles in the gloss and that pops the little air bubbles so you get more of a smooth finish. Um, once it was dry, I actually applied a second coat just to give it more gloss and it helped kind of conceal that little bit of bleeding I got, but it wasn't big enough to destroy the card. It's just more, I notice it, but really in the end, it's still a fun card. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Your thumbs up, your comments, everything. Um, links to everything will be below the video as well as on my blog. So just check out the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.